I'm going to show you how to make some ball retrieval devices for golf ball hunting. I'm going to show you how easy it is to find golf balls, not during the day, but at night. Um, here's my one. Whoopsie daisy. It's quite long, as you can see. This one is mine. The other one I've just showed you is my one I've made for my father-in-law. This one is a bit over-engineered, I'll be honest, but we've got the ultraviolet night scope. We've got a ball collector, a ball releaser. We've got a claw rake, okay? Um, this, I'll show you how to make these, okay? So, um, ball hunting at night with a UV torch is far easier because they glow up super, super well. I'll show you an example. Then we'll go on to how to make a tool um, this very, very cost effective. I think this whole thing, there was a slight mistake at the checkout at the range and this thing cost me next to nothing. I didn't question it. Um, probably should have done, I just ran off. Um, but I made this whole thing, I think this was only about two quid and it was supposed to be about eight. This handle was four quid from Tool Station and this gripper handle was about three quid off eBay. That's the, normally go on the end of putters, you know, to pop into the ground for old people who can't be bothered to bend down. So you combine them all splice it on, screw it on, and uh, yeah, you've got yourself a, a nifty little tool. So, um, I'll show you my more advanced one with soft grips and all sorts. Now then, what are we on to next? Oh yes, once you've got all these golf balls in which you will collect like more than you know what to do with, you need to understand, well, which ball should you be playing? How do you clean them up? How can you even get the ball markers off? How do you get them looking as best grade as you can? Um, so they come out looking a bit more like that as opposed to just a ball that you found covered in grime and grub because a sponge and hot water doesn't always do it. There's a, a secret little technique for that, which I'll go through. And yeah, we'll do a demonstration now of what these things are like to use at night. So um, I'll replicate some night time. She's supposed to be in bed. Right. It's Sunday morning, as I said. So then, right, where are the balls? Somewhere they're down here, right? I'll point to the balls now, and then we'll point the light on them. Now the rest of the, the set, as you can see, doesn't light up, really. The odd thing does. This bowl does, because it's, oh, it's uh, nuclear. It's got um, radioactive material in it, apparently. I've done a video on that one. But, um, yeah, look. And then you can see how well they, they light up. And that is the same when you're out on the golf course. They literally just, they're like beacons in the rough stuff. You don't even have to have hardly any ball showing and they just light up. It's amazing. You can find all the plugged ones, which is where the need for, you know, getting to those harder to reach ones comes in. A nice solid rake attachment, hand rake attachment there. A bit of length to be able to get to it and then one to then pluck it, especially if they're plugged. This one's very useful for plugged ones because you can just like pluck them out of the plugged bit of ground and drops a good one. So yeah, I'll go into it very, very quickly, what you're gonna need. I've already gone through this very quickly, but yeah, four pound tool station handle. This is the tapered one. They do a two pound one, which is how I've made the other one. I'll go into that one in a sec. The Wilkinson sword, this particular one, is the uh, handbrake. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I use plastic to start with, and it didn't last me very long. Uh, that was like a one pound one from the range. You basically cut off the handle at the end and then you splice it to the wood. Now, if you buy the tapered one, it already comes easily to slot on. You just basically cut the handrake, put it on, two screws through and screw it in and then cover it in tape just to make it easy for the hand, you know, in case you hurt yourself grabbing it. Uh, that just screws on the end. So drill a hole on the end of the, the wood and then you just screw that in. Be careful because it can split the wood. Um, I've ended up splitting the wood slightly, so I've, I've glued it as well. A bit of epoxy resin, and then put the, put the tape around. And that is, that is solid, it's not unscrewing now. That is not going anywhere. So that's pretty much how you do it in a nutshell. To make the more advanced version, this one, this one, what is this one? Honestly, this thing's crazy. Uh, I've, it's, this, it's just a wooden handle. It's a two pound wooden handle. It's slightly longer, slightly larger. Took a bit more cutting down to size. To splice onto wood, just to give you an example of what you need to do, here's one I made earlier. This is what it looks like, okay? It doesn't matter how ugly it is, that's my, that's my effort at trying to splice. You basically uh, screw holes round, or screw, uh, not screw, saw, sorry. Saw round to a certain depth, 
and then you just take a screwdriver like this one here I'm not sure if I've, I've uh, you probably want to make them a bit closer together this might not work and all you do is then twist oh yeah, it does work you just twist the screwdriver and you can see it just crumbles away more stuff to clean up later still stays very solid yeah but that's how you then can taper it down to then slide that onto <laughs> nice tight fit there already that's pretty tight okay and then you've got your screw holes one there and one there so then just screw it in for extra measure and then tape around to corrupt the screws because they all stick out slightly okay so that is the broken version before I uh, re-spliced so this one essentially you mount the torch using some Table cut, uh, cable ties. I've actually put a putter grip onto the end of this, so it's got a nice bit of flex, which means you can get to the balls from different angles, um, which I quite like. I've used a kid's toy. This was like a, you know, you get these for bath toys. I mean, I just got lucky. We found one that would hold, but you would find it would plug in really well, but then wouldn't release. So I had to then drill a hole and put a release mechanism in. So this is my little <laughs> release mechanism that pushes the balls in and out. It does work really, really well. In fact, I've not even showed you this picking up yet, have I? Sure. Okay, so I'm going to go right at, at length now, as far away as I can be. As you can see, I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'm as far out on stretch as I can be. My hand right up here on the, uh, the fork end. I've seen the ball in the rough. I want to grab it. I just pop it on. No pressure at all on this thing. And Okay, not easy to get a grip on that. To, to then get it out, as I said, so we pop that and the, and the ball pops out. Right, now on to cleaning them up. So, soap and water, as you'd imagine, and then you can use one of these. This is a magic eraser, so flash make them. You can buy them from Asda by JML. This one's from the range, £1.50 for three of them, uh, called the, whatever it says there, elbow grease, I'm reading it backwards. They look a bit like this, it's called melamine. It's a type of sponge, it's just it's just a sponge. There's nothing more to it, there's no cleaning chemicals in it. These are really effective at cleaning the, the kitchen. I tried it on the kitchen, I was like, oh my God, this works amazing. You just wet it, wet it and scrub. It's as simple as that. And it brings up all of the grub, brings the balls up as new as they can look. It even starts to take off some of the pen. So that used to have red marker all over it there. You can still see some signs of it there but it does a really good job of cleaning them all up and it does it very, very quickly. That's pretty much the entire guide for how to find golf balls at night. It's really addictive um, because, I mean, I'm out with the dog anyway, so I might as well go walk out and find golf balls at the same time, seeing as I lose loads when I play. It gives you a chance to play with loads of different balls and try different things. You can give them to friends, you can give them to the charity shop, you can just throw all the crap ones into the, the hitting nets or on the putting greens and just let anyone use them. Um, so plenty you can do with the balls. Typically speaking, which ball should you use? Higher handicappers who just want it nice and straight uh, off the tee without the spin should use two core balls, your chrome softs, anything that says soft on it typically is one of those kind of balls. Mid handicapper range balls are three core tier construction typically with the urethane cover, slightly different cover. They feel slightly different to the hand, you get used to it, but they spin a little bit more, um, which is fine around the greens, gives you that more green side control just means a little bit more chance to spin off and go like left or right off the tee. So if you're hitting drive and you've got it with a fade or a, 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 a slice or a hook, sorry, it's gonna accentuate that. When you get to a Pro V1, say a Chrome Soft X, a TP5 TaylorMade, or like a Vice Pro Plus or something like that, you're into balls that really, really spin. I actually just hit a ladies, my favorite, because you can really easy to compress them, a pink ladies Chrome Soft, um, matte pink, Perfect in the winter weather. It feels great off the face. Doesn't spin, but in winter, again, you don't care because it's everything's like super soft, right? The ground will just stick. You can attack the greens. I attacked the green with one yesterday, just literally just checked and stopped because you've got to not only play the ball, but you have to play the weather. So in the UK, in winter, when it gets boggy and everything's stopping anyway, do yourself a favor. Don't reach for the Pro V1X. You don't need it. Reach for these Chrome Soft and have a wonderful time out there. Okay, right, that's enough of me blabbing on, 15 minutes, pretty much. Sorry to bore you all, take care.